So the one downside about this is that it has Dropbox has massive productivity benefits, but from a security perspective, um, it allows sensitive documents potentially to be copied, shared, downloaded, or printed by unauthorized users. In addition, as we just talked about, it can extend and increase the hacker risk outside your company. Okay, so you know, and, and again, I want to make it clear that when you do collaboration, that's kind of core. That's going to be something that you have to accept as, as an issue. It doesn't mean that among collaboration solutions, Dropbox is not secure. I would argue that it is secure among collaboration solutions. But just by the nature of being a collaboration solution and being designed for this, it does expose you to some sensitivity around some you know, uh, unauthorized sharing. Okay. So what I say is that collaboration solutions, when you think about it, you say they're ideal where the productivity benefits of editing and sharing outweigh the consequences of leaks. Okay? So I'm going to give you a very clear example of where the consequence of leaks was too high. And I want to be clear again, the example I'm going to give you, this is not an example of Dropbox being responsible for this. Um, this is just gives you an example of where you have to understand the sensitivity of your documents and the consequence of those documents being leaked is extremely high. So Dropbox was not um, the uh, reason for these examples at all, but it is an example of documents being of extreme, uh, having extremely high consequences when they were leaked. On the right here you see a picture of Ed Snowden, on the left here you see a picture of Bradley Manning, um, and Julian Assange, which, which was the founder of WikiLeaks. So in both cases, large amounts of documents were downloaded and copied um, and then leaked to external sources. Okay? So again, neither of these um, were used by Dropbox, but it's the kind of thing, the kind of leakage that can occur when you don't have control of the documents, when you use things like collaboration solutions. Okay? I don't think any of you are in the, the government security um, uh, sector. So, but you can see that from the same kind of things, if you can look at analog an analogy um, with companies, this could be things like your client list, your intellectual property, your trade secrets. Um, it could be your uh, margins by product, your margins, your revenue by product, the roadmap of where your products are headed and how much money you think you can make anything that has to do with the core health and financial health of your company and where it's directed. Okay. Polling question number two. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and launch the second polling question. And this is just to help um, also us understand. And this is, have any of you guys ever used a virtual data room uh, for your business purposes? Go ahead and answer that question. We'll give it just a few minutes. I'll give a couple more seconds here. Okay, this is really interesting. We are seeing um, a very similar split to um, the Dropbox. So 52% have used uh, Virtual Data Room and 48% have not. Wow. So there you go, Albert. That totally surprises me. In our in our engagements with people, um, you guys are obviously a very knowledgeable audience. I would say that um, for the most part, I would say for every 10 people that know or have heard or have used Dropbox, we typically will find one or two that know or have heard of a virtual data room. So you guys are obviously very um, aware and in this space very much. Um, so I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but I, hopefully the concepts, and again, um, I'm trying to make these very simple concepts so that you guys understand, kind of really can delineate where the use cases uh, may separate. In other words, you know, where you may use a sedan versus a truck. Um, so I'm going to try and make them uh, very clear. When you think of a secure virtual data room, unlike the Dropbox where you may have, you're thinking about making multiple copies of a digital um, document, um, in a secure virtual data room, the notion of it is really to have just one copy. And it's not a copy that is going to be edited. It's a copy that's usually a signature document. So uh, some lawyers refer to a virtual data room as the one uh, source of truth. So where documents are actually signed um, as a source of truth about the company. So that's one of, kind of the fundamental differences. So going back to our example, 
if you had intellectual property, client contracts, uh, revenue by product, margin by product, client list with revenue, supplier list with margins and contracts, capitalization table, employee agreements, and client bank and, and tax ID information. All this information is very sensitive, and a lot of it, um, a lot of these documents have signatures on them. So these are not documents that you would edit. These are mostly documents that are kind of facts, or they have signatures on them already. Okay, going back to our example, internally, though operationally, certain departments may need access to some of the documents. So what you would do is grant them maybe view only access, no download, no copy or printing capability to certain documents within the data room. And you could say that for the other departments as well, right? Product might need a couple of uh, access to a couple of the um, uh, elements of your data room. Finance obviously would have access to all of the data room. Uh, manufacturing, uh, just because they're a partner or a supplier, may need access to some of your data room. And maybe an outside consultant needs access to some of your data room. So in this way, you can actually control the documents that they see and you make it so they don't actually download or copy or forward the documents. They can view the information they have, but you're the one that controls the documents. Okay. So, and then when you look externally to your company, for your company, uh, if you're a startup or your CFO is working, you know that you will have preterm investors. So they haven't given you a term sheet, but they want to see some uh, a little bit of information about your company before they invest. So they have access to some parts of your data room. If they give you a term sheet, you may extend them additional access to your data room. And then certainly your board, lawyers, and auditors would have access potentially to your whole data room. Suppliers to your company may need access to some of your data room or you may ask them to upload certain documents into your data room so you have that for company record. And then strategic partners who may also um, need access to parts of your data room as well. And so again, you don't necessarily want all these people to have access to all your data room and you don't necessarily want them all to have a copy of your information on there that they control locally. You may want to be the one person that controls all this stuff. And so I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how this would actually look. So this is an example of SecureDocs, which is our product. We use something called two-factor authentication um, when you enter the data room. So what that means is that even if someone steals either your or one of your users' username and passwords, if they try to enter our data room and we don't recognize the computer, we will challenge them to enter an SMS code that we've sent to the end user's phone just to verify that they are who they say they are. This is meant to thwart attackers in particular. When they come in, they have to sign an NDA. It's an electronic NDA that goes directly into the data room. Then you're presented with a folder structure. This folder structure could be very similar to something that you might use in a Dropbox. The place where things get a little bit different, though, is that once you look up a document in here and you want to look at it, if you're presented with only, if you've been only authorized for view only, this document may only appear in your browser. It is not downloaded, can't be copied. Um, and we can even turn off things like print. Now, the things that we cannot do, to be upfront with you, is we can't prevent someone from taking a screenshot of this one page. We cannot prevent someone from taking an iPhone picture of this page. But what we've done to try to help thwart them is that there is a watermark that identifies the person that is looking at this page, the email address of the person, and the date and time that they're looking at it. And so what you're messaging them to them and you're raising the bar here is you're saying this could be litigated if it ever sees the light of day. The other thing is you're by saying that you can only print one page at a time, that's radically different than being able to download entire um, groups and batches of documents. In addition, there is an audit log which tells you about each user and what they did that day. So if you're a CFO or a controller or someone inside the company, you can get automatic um, alerts about documents that have been uploaded and you can get daily reports about what the activity was in the data room. So certainly from an investor perspective, this would give you very clear information about who the most interested investors are in your, um, in your company, uh, even for raising debt capital. And it would tell you who you may want to pick up the phone and call to get them to get into the data room. And additionally, if you had someone doing things that were inappropriate, you would start seeing long periods of time that they were in the data room, and you may ask, be questioning why they're in the data room for that long and what they're doing looking at all these different documents. 
Um, this is an example of setting up someone's rights. So you could say if this was someone, maybe an outside investor with term sheet rights, you may give them uh, view only rights to the corporate records and some financial reports. But you may deny them access, meaning that when they enter the data room, they wouldn't see intellectual property, human resources, or material agreements, any of those things. And again, view only rights prevents them from downloading, blocks them from, from downloading, copying, or forwarding, um, or printing uh, the materials that you provided them. Okay. So going back to our example um, about you know this data room here and, and sharing with all these external parties, in a sense, before we use the example of the UPS truck carrying copies for everybody, in a sense, what this is, this is one copy, and you've put it to an armored truck. And what you can do then is that the armored truck goes out to a term investor. In order to enter the truck, you make them sign an NDA. When they enter the truck, they can see only the documents that you've given them permission to. And everything they look at is being recorded by a camera. In addition, when they have done, they most documents back in the truck, and then they leave the truck, and the truck comes back to you and under your control. So that's in terms of being, instead of being like a zero copy machine that provides zero copies, and then the US truck takes it to all these people, and then you don't actually control the documents. By having the documents loaded into the armored truck, you're actually in control of documents, who sees them, and getting very clear information about what they did with those documents, and then they leave the truck without taking the documents with them and without controlling them. Okay, back to our example. This again is an extreme example um, of consequent higher level of control sharing and security. If um, the government had been using some kind of virtual data room, you can see that the capability of downloading thousands of documents and then taking them or um, stealing them would have been much more difficult because they would have had um, view only mode which means they would have taken screenshots of one page at a time there would have been someone that would have gotten uh, a view of how much activity was going because there would be an audit log that would show how much activity these folks were spending in that in that data room and I'm not here to say that what they did was wrong or right um, but what I am presenting to you is that whatever um, device is being used to host this information, these folks, a third-party contractor, um, a fairly uh, low-level uh, person in the military, had extraordinary access to download, copy, and forward these documents in a way that has seriously compromised um, the United States' relation with allies and uh, potentially, you know, you could argue with some things uh, going on around the world. If you look at this as an analogy for your company, um, a virtual data room helps restrict the access people have and also the level of control they have over the documents or information that you provide to them. Okay, so when you think of a virtual data room or like secure docs like our virtual data room, it's really having one copy of the documents. It's where you want to share information but control the documents. This is not a collaboration solution. It's where you need to be able to share information but control the documents. So there's the benefits of access anywhere, anytime. It's primarily used for signature documents and secret company documents. It has restricted access, option to block, downloading, forwarding, copying, and printing, watermarks for tracing these, audit log with detailed user activity, two-factor authentication to thwart out hackers, and NDAs. Um, in terms of pricing, now typically virtual data rooms are extraordinarily expensive. Um, they'll typically charge you anywhere, you know, they can charge you a dollar per pay that you upload. We at SecureDocs have tried to change that model and chopped it fairly dramatically. So what we allow is unlimited users, so we have uh, clients with hundreds of users, and unlimited documents. We have clients with 50,000 documents. So you can imagine how many pages are in there. We charge them a flat fee of $2,400 a year. Again, it's unlimited users, could be hundreds, uh, unlimited documents, um, we anticipated thousands and we charge $2,400 a year flat fee. If you're going through a very short-term transaction, you don't need it for a year, or you don't think you need it anywhere beyond that, beyond that, it's $900 for three months. So the place of virtual data rooms are not good is they're not designed for group collaboration and editing. So any real-time editing, version control, that's not really a strength of um, virtual data rooms. So they're not designed for that kind of use case. They're designed for very sensitive documents where 
a, a leakage of those documents could have potential high consequences for the company and for you. Okay, so summary, when you look at the 